Hi, it's been a while since I've done any type of hardware related video on my channel and because of that today's topic is going to be all about Commodore 64 hardware. Uh, I would like to show you some modifications and repairs I've done on my little Commodore 64 um, as I like to call it the Frankenstein and I'll explain shortly why is that. Uh, so yeah, let's begin. Okay, so this is my Commodore 64 Frankenstein and Frankenstein is simply because there is a lot of things that modified on this board and the reason uh, is yeah um, that's the parts that I had so I modified this board to accommodate a big two chip from the short board and sit from the short board and the rest of the things so yeah let's go um, chronologically so when I bought this uh, little um, board well I bought the entire uh, Commodore 64 um, machine uh, it was sold as non-tested so that means two things uh, either is something simple and easy to fix like blown fuse or something like that or switch or it's completely dead and uh, in this case it was the latter one <laughs> VIC-2 chip was dead, SID chip was dead, uh, PLA was dead, uh, color RAM was dead and I believe this memory chip was dead. Also there were several broken traces at the, behind the board on the back side. Um, well at the time I didn't know all of that so I tried to um, fix it one thing at a time. Well if I knew this <laughs> I would left this board probably for the spare parts but yeah, I didn't know that at the time, so I, in the end, uh, managed to fix everything. Um, so beside these um, broken chips, or the chips that didn't work, um, after some time I still had some issue with this board. I will try to find the image and show you how that looked like, um, but um, that little thing <laughs> gave me a uh, like, proper headache of like a couple of weeks of troubleshooting this board in that period I was going crazy and tried to desolder several other chips that had nothing to do with that issue so I desolder all the memory almost all the memory chips I desol desolder um, and remove all the um, ROMs I, because I believe that um, character ROM could be potentially the problem um, and then once I remove the character ROM, I remove the kernel and then the basic ROM also. So yeah, uh, in the end it was one single broken trace <laughs> at the back of the board. It was just a tiny tiny little crack. Um, yeah, uh, it was crazy. But once I found that now everything work, worked properly. So I needed to buy a week 2 chip for this board. PLA, this I had in my stash. It's not the best alternative, but this replacement PLA works for now. So yeah, it's, it's there. Uh, the SID chip I had also in my stash, but this SID chip is also from the short board. Um, and in the end, I bought a week two chip, uh, which is, uh, this chip is 8565 for the short board, uh, it turns out that these are a bit cheaper than the original one that goes in the long board. So yeah, in the end I modified this board to accommodate VIC-2 chip, um, SID chip, um, and also for the first time I use Lumafix 64. I have this little board for years, I never actually use it, so yeah. Okay, so the VIC-2 chip is, was not big of a deal because instead of um, 12 volts it, ne it needed uh, two lines with 5 volts so I did modifications in this area to bring another 5 volts and everything worked perfectly. So that was not a big uh, of uh, issue. And the SID chip is um, a little bit 
complicated because this chip um, this uh, this SID works on 9 volts not on 12 volts so what I did I changed this voltage regulator from 12 volts to 9 volts and the SID chip is the only one that uses this 9 volts DC uh, also be, be, beside that I needed to change filter capacitors these two little things right here because once I um, place this chip inside the longboard everything worked it was great except there was a sound except the volume was just too <laughs> too low so and then I tried to investigate and figure out that for this new seed chip um, which is 85 um, 8580 um, they are completely different values for this filter capacitor so once I change them everything worked perfectly and then I decided to go even further with this uh, machine and modified it a little bit more so I decided to create a little mod uh, which you can see right here now this is the reset switch for the Commodore 64 now the idea is to use a keyboard uh, to reset the machine so what I did um, is created a circuit a little circuit that attacks um, keystrokes of two keys and once this is detected then uh, the system resets itself now I'm going to show you the circuit that I made the schematics but uh, it mainly consists of two NPN transistors and one NAND gate that's that's about it I want something that it's just pure hardware without any uh, microcontrollers or something like that um, and because I'm not a professional um, yeah I'm sure this could be done in much efficient way if you want to do this by yourself um, take this with a little bit of grain of salt because yeah like I said I'm not a professional I'm not really sure if this is working like 100% it works for me um, it's my own design I didn't um, copy anything so maybe there is some solutions that are better out there so yeah we are going to solder this um, on the keyboard connector behind the behind the board on the back side and mounted on a keyboard um, somewhere um, yeah we'll see so I want to show you something else that was really really helpful uh, for troubleshooting this uh, board and I didn't know that this tool exists but thanks to Steve from 8-bit retro refix who showed me this and it was just brilliant um, yeah uh, let me show you that first then we will go for this um, explaining the circuit this little circuit and then we will test it out on this board because I developed this on the short board maybe there is some differences or some resistance value that are not as they supposed to yeah so let's do that okay and this is the tool that I wanted to show you um, that I use for troubleshooting this Commodore 64 board and in general all the long boards uh, and you will see why uh, so if you type in Commodore 64 250407 which is the um, board number um, what you are looking for is github repository for replica keycad so if you open this um, this is the Gerber files and boom files um, boom list for um, a Commodore 64 replica board that uh, 20, 250407 replica so it's meant to build whole new PCB and build it from scratch what is interesting for us here is this it's called interactive boom and this is very very helpful um, tool uh, which I didn't know that it even existed until Steve from 8-bit retro refix showed me this and I was yeah that, that's it uh, so if I open this this is what we have on the left side we have our interactive boom list and on the right side we have uh, top view of the motherboard and the bottom view and everything here is interactive so that means if we choose 
these cap little capacitors, it will show us everywhere where we need to uh, place it, where they are placed on, on the motherboard. Also, if we select one of the chips, it will show us which one it, I it is, uh, the mark, uh, the number on the motherboard, original motherboard, and the deep socket and everything else. Uh, but also not only the elements, but also the traces. <laughs> Look at this. This is beautiful. And you can, uh, so I just picked here a 5 volt trail. So yeah, and it shows everywhere where it goes on the bottom view and on the top view, uh, uh, on the top side as well. And on the bottom side. Very beautiful. So this is how um, I trace, for example, our reset line um, here so you can see this is the reset uh, line and you can see where it uh, everywhere where it goes uh, we have it here on the serial uh, port and then uh, CIAs also have it CPU of course um, and then uh, uh, I trace it I needed so, uh, uh, I need it somewhere near the keyboard uh, uh, connector, right? So, yeah, if you look at the bottom, this is our keyboard connector from the bottom side. And you can see this via. Yeah, that's the one that I've used and I just solder uh, wire to it. That's it. Very, very simple. Uh, also, I will use this tool to show you what modifications I've done uh, to accommodate WIC2 chip and SID chip uh, from the short board on long board. So first of all, WIC2 chip uh, requires only 5 volts instead of 12 volts that we have here on this board. So uh, I trace the 12 volts are, is coming from this uh, voltage regulator right here here on this line too and you can see where it goes uh, so for the SID chip it goes through this ferro bead right here you see and for the WIC2 chip it goes through this ferro bead right here you see on this pin right here and I needed instead of 12 volts I needed 5 volts here so I needed 5 volts on this line right here uh, to be precise on this point right here here i desoldered this ferro bead from this position and i cross it over all the way to this ferro bead right here which is connected to 5 volt rail and that's about it that's what you saw this little crossover and wick 2 chip is solved <laughs> so i didn't need to change anything inside this area which is um, very important because it's very crowded here uh, so yeah so once the big two chip was out of the 12 volts rail um, the only thing that was left it was the seed chip uh, that uses this 12 volts uh, once we replace that with the seed chip from the short board which requires 9 volts all I need to do is replace this voltage regulator to 9 volts and now instead of 12 volts on all of these traces here on this rail we had 9 volts and that's about it now the SID chip was also working fine and then the next thing that we need to do is change these uh, two little uh, filter capacitors right here now if you select these you will see that these are C10 and C11, which has value of 470 picofarad, right? For the new SID, for SID for, 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 from the short board, uh, the value of these capacitors are much higher. It's in thousands of picofarad. I believe it's two, three thousand picofarad, something like that. So once I change those, the volume was back to normal. Everything worked perfectly. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> so and you can zoom in, zoom out, do whatever you like. I mean, I mean, it's it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, I don't know how I ever uh, troubleshoot the boards without this. Uh, I mean, it's it's awesome. <laughs> uh, also, I will place all the links for these tools and everything else in the description of this video down below. 
Okay, so this is my reset circuit. Um, if you notice on this little board, it looks a little bit different than at the beginning of this video because this is the day number two, the next day, uh, because I had some issues with my initial um, circuit. Uh, and this is my new circuit now. Now I'm going to show you. Um, yeah, I had a bit of a problem with powering on this LED when I want to uh, reset the machine. Um, the whole reset uh, worked, but uh, the LED wouldn't power on. So I need to do a little bit modification to do that because I, I want to do some kind of effect. Um, yeah, but may, of course this this would work um, without, without uh, LED um, anyway. Uh, but this is my new circuit. So how this um, circuit even works. Uh, so yeah, so let's start from the beginning. So first of all, here we have signals coming from the keyboard uh, pinout uh, from the and keyboard pinout or keyboard matrix um, is um, constructed from two ports, port B and port A. Uh, and the port PB, port B is the one that is um, a functioning as output. So we are um, monitoring PB1 and PB3 and the signal goes through the resistors to NPN transistors. So when these two lines go low, so when one of these lines go low, uh, the signal uh, will travel, this five volts from here will travel to our uh, NAND gate right here. Uh, if uh, our NAND gate receives two high signals here and here, uh, at the end of the NAND gate, we will have the low signal. Now, initially that this low signal here uh, was kind of good enough to pull the reset switch uh, to reset line uh, to low and reset the machine that was it but i had this led and it it didn't actually work as i uh, well it, it did work on the short board but on but on the long board it simply i couldn't make make it work so i made a whole bunch of modifications at this side here to power on this led once uh, the reset happened. Uh, so it turns out that because I used the NAND gate uh, because that's the IC that I uh, had in my stash but for this purpose it could be uh, much better to use AND gate uh, now in this case uh, but um, even without the AND gate we can uh, get um, high signal on the second gate uh, here so uh, if we have a uh, low gate, uh, low signal here on this uh, coming from this first uh, NAND gate and we push this to the second uh, NAND gate, second pin we pull to high and then we will have um, the opposite signal from the, this one. So if this one is low, this one will be high and if, if this one is high, this one will be low. So we have... Okay, so we can use either one or, or the other um, output as a signal. So in this case, I use this um, high signal. So that means that when these two lines go goes to ground or, or they are shorted in, in the keyboard matrix, this line will go high. Uh, and that means in that case, we are uh, pushing that signal through again NPN transistor here, uh, which pulls this reset line to ground. That's it. That's it. That's really simple. When that happens, when this line goes uh, to ground, um, pulling the reset pin to ground, uh, at the same time, our LED will power on because it goes from the 5 volts through the resistor. Uh, this is 1K resistor. Uh, and through the LED and right here. So the LED will power on and the reset uh, line will go to ground. And that's basically it. It's actually pretty simple, but um, 
during my kind of development because i was building this uh, from my head and and trying this and trying that in the end i uh, modified this little board with this transistor uh, and this now looks pretty pretty ugly <laughs> so i need to do another one uh, but uh, we will use in this video uh, just for the purpose of demonstration uh, what we have uh, the transistor that I had was 2222 uh, NPM transistors but I'm sure that you can use any um, NPM transistor to make this work um, and I will put the, this schematic and images uh, in the description of this video uh, if you want to build it yourself uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm sure that someone who's in um, professional electronics can see uh, some flaws here. <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, any comment is highly recommended uh, and improvement to this little circuit. I already tested this now on this board because, uh, because of all the trouble that I had. Okay, here we are. So let me pull this board a little bit. Higher. Yeah. So uh, this is the ground. This is this red one is VCC, and this is P, uh, PB1 uh, or PB3. This is PB1 or something like that. It really doesn't matter um, which is which. And the only thing that we are still uh, that we need is to solder the reset line. And if I remember uh, correctly, reset lines should be one of these vias here. I believe it's this one. Yeah, I will use something like this. Hmm. No, you don't do it. Okay. Did you get it now? Yep. Right. We need power and we need keyboard. So what we need now is the keyboard, of course. Okay. And So yeah, let me just where is it? Yeah, something like that. Okay, and we do need a power. Where is my power? Oh. So this little board here so that we can see it I will move the camera point at the key and I have this moment of truth hey we have Jiffy DOS I don't know can you see our ah oh, bloody hell <laughs> come on don't do this to me <laughs> Come on. <laughs> okay, you can see small image, so we can type in that fine. Uh, we have some syntax error, which is fine. And then what I'm going to do is this, and hopefully, yeah, we have reset. <laughs> Yeah, nice. And we can reset it as much as we want. Cool. So the combination of two keys um, will reset 
the machine. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so now I'm going to uh, glue this board, uh, little board, inside this top case, um, top part of the case, somewhere in a safe place. Uh, inside so yeah somewhere in here and hopefully this is done So the idea is hopefully that this little LED will be visible from the keyboard itself. So uh, maybe yes, maybe no, but uh, somewhere here perhaps. So hopefully we will see a green light there. And yeah. Maybe just to hold it something like this. Uh, but for now, let's see it as it is. Oh. And it's on. Hey, we have it. Keyboard works. And reset switch works but we cannot see the LED so um, bear with me until I create some oh and then this oh can we see any LED light here <laughs> Uh, nope, <laughs> we don't see anything, but, ah, we see, there is something on power on, because it's light is a little bit longer, so, I don't know if you can see it, yeah, there it is, so between these two, okay, so, if we, we have LED, okay, now we have Commodore 64 powered on, and then we reset nope barely visible yeah it's here you can see it here like slightly <laughs> but nevertheless when you power it on you can see there is something there <laughs> cool okay so yeah that's all that i have for you today so until next time goodbye oh also one more thing i don't know how to show you this i will try i will try i have a new little camera yeah mm. yeah um what you see here i want to show you something if i don't yeah look at this now this is radio audio video receiver 
So, and this is the composite output that goes into my uh, capture ca um, card on PC. This is the tuner and this is the antenna. Now I'm going to try to show you the, the camera. Uh, <laughs> uh, and that's this little camera right here. Oh, we lost. Go back, go back, please give me image. Ah, here we go. Uh, yeah, there it is, the little antenna. See that? Oh, cool. <laughs> is this awesome? Uh, I'm not really 100% sure, but I would say that this is late 90s and early 2000 <laughs> design. <laughs> it's brilliant. So yeah, let's let's place it back. Ooh. Oh, we have to adjust. Come on. <laughs> it's the interference. 